Hello out there and welcome to English Teacher Plays. We're here with 2001 to a space, uh, 2001 a space felony, 2001 a space felony, anyways, anyways, it's a humble original, it came with one of my uh, humble bundle things and, uh, and we're going to play it. We're going to jump in and see what this is all about. Right. Oh. Okay. We're in. Yep, there's a there's definitely a phone ringing. That's a thing that's happening. Yes. Mal, abort mission. Abort Return what? Return to Earth. What? Why? Repeat, abort mission. Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. Mal? Crew life signs are stable. They are living. Abort mission. I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Mal? I am going through a tunnel. <laughs> Return to Earth. <laughs> He's going through a tunnel. All right, so that's... Uh. Uh... Um, so that's how 9000. The record begins on May 10th in 2068, as you intercepted the USS Endowment, two years into its six-year journey to Saturn. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, 2001, a space felony. Yeah, or. How I came to value my life and murder your mission something. was to piece together yeah. what happened following the loss of communication one year prior. If you determined that the Mal AI was the cause of the issue, then it was your responsibility to deactivate him. Okay. I mean that that sounds like me. I definitely like deactivating AI. Faux show. The lack of air will halt DS e ray but allow me to broadcast something over my own channel. <coughs> uh. Okay. The record states oh. that upon entering the ship, you tested your rotation thrusters. I I did. You then endeavored to discover what happened to the communications unit, located on the exterior of the ship. Okay, so we're um oh we're in two thousand one a space odyssey. Ooh, geez. Now let's have a look in these in these little areas. You utilized the artificial gravity of the wheelhouse by orienting yourself to the ground and gently landing. Uh, I guess I did. Um, yeah. Oh, now I'm gonna orient myself to the ground and then gently land. Okay, come on. There we go. The relatively small size of the centrifuge causes a 6.3% difference in gravity between your toes and your head. This results in the most literal cases of lightheadedness. Lie down. This will even out the effect. Okay. Oh, I want to. No. Okay, cool. We don't need any poison. Let's see. What have we got here? This is this is really weird. This is really. Kind of off-putting. Oh, I've got the, the controls. Having a part of oh. the ship dedicated to human control made the crew feel less useless than they were. Right. Oh, so I'm here to take pictures. He's he's stuck out there. Look at him. Aries, Sun, Gemini, Moon, Leo, Rising, and Taurus, Mercury, with an Aquarius, Venus, and a Sagittarius, Mars. Which is, of course, why I have always been extremely curious about experiencing the specific taste of a sweetened soya milk. Okay. Weird. You found an open container of a substance called poisonocene. The label read, <laughs> May cause irritable skin, bloating, a sullen disposition, slight elbow discomfort, and an accursed, sudden, but inevitable death. Do not ingest. Do not lick. Actually, don't do anything with it. It's an incredibly dangerous substance, and we're not sure why exactly it gets sold to extraterrestrial traveling operations. 
on mass. Store in a cool terrestrial environment. Right. Right. Cursed uh, but sudden inevitable death. Like a cursed but sudden inevitable betrayal. Oh, here we go. Who's this? You discovered the body of Sun Su Chun, one of the sisters on the crew. She was dead inside the offline cryo bed. Yeah. Sad. All right. Oh, we've got so much nice music going on. Hmm. It's a water closet. Oh, I see. I see. I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay. Oh, there's another. The wheelhouse of the ship is where you found the body of Valeria Asimov. She was face down against the bar, with a downturned glass in her hand. She bore no sign of physical injury. Moonlight Sonata for us. Maybe she was maybe she was drinking some of that poisos as a scene or whatever. Okay. Weird. Some fish. In the centrifugal wheelhouse, <laughs> you found a startlingly unbeautiful fish tank, housing plastic sea life. Despite the tank being placed seemingly parallel to the floor, its water was resting obliquely. Yeah, that's you weird. You note that this is caused by the Coriolis effect, a side effect of the centrifuge's spin. Oh, okay. Weird. That's that's cool. I like it. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, that was nothing. You discovered a puzzling pinkish purplish puddle on the floor inside the wheelhouse, several yeah. metric paces from the bar. It wasn't promptly apparent as to how it reached this position, but the centrifugal gravity seemed to be holding it in place. All right. Have we already done that? Nope. Nope. Taking lots of photos. That's cool. Oh, I, I, was, I just tried to take a screenshot. Oh, I see. It told me where to get my screenshots. Okay, so we want to go back up and... Oh, oh, we hit something. That's bad. Okay, let's go here and go this way. Oh, we're bouncing quite a lot. That's... Ah! We're just not good at this thing. All right. Ooh, what's that? Oh. Humans used to use the star Polaris to navigate. I utilize Polaris Navigation Suite 2064 version 8.1.5.6.9. All right. We found another body. What are they doing there? In the central spine of the ship, you discovered Valeria Asimov's discarded EVA suit. The helmet showed clear signs of damage from a blunt object, which it seems to have easily withstood. Yeah, Upon weird. entering the pod bay, you noticed that one of the maintenance pods was absent. Oh, I did, did I? Okay. Alright. Maintenance pod. Okay, so we're missing a maintenance pod. Alright, why are we missing a maintenance pod? That's the question. Okay... What, is it, what does it say on the thing? The screen indicated that the pod had been absent for over a year. You pushed the button to recall the pod. Oh, intermission! Okay, weird. <clears throat> That's not me whistling. Oh my god. He's whistling the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey thing theme. <whistles> One year later? One year later for what? I have been analyzing humor patterns, and I have assembled a joke. Would you like to hear it? I'll tell you. <clears throat> One, two, eight, Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Did you understand the joke? It is the greatest joke ever, by my calculations. Right. So this is a this is a tribute to. Um, oh my God, Doctor Strangelove, where he rides the bomb, uh, 
as they, yeah, as it's destroyed. You discovered the body of Dmitry Kizov clinging to the outside of the maintenance pod, with his safety tether still attached. The Russian crew member seemed to have removed his helmet and asphyxiated. Nice. What is this? What is this? Upon the left claw of the maintenance pod was a brown substance, which you described as possibly rust. But you also note that due to your keen detective skills, <laughs> you determined that it was most certainly blood. Oh, excellent. So the claw had some blood on it. Love it. All right. Ooh. We didn't see that before. All right. Oh, man, there's so much good classical music in this. Love it. Um, okay, so we're done with the pod, I guess. Uh, let's go back out of the pod. What's through here? There we go. We found a new area. You entered the engineering bay, the workstation of Sun Guan Yin. However, there was no sign of the engineer's body. Right? What is this? Manual emergency lever. Okay. Nope. Right. So can we go out into space? Oh, we're out in space now. Nice. I like it. We've exited the building. This is cool, though. This is cool. The record states that you discovered the body of Charlie Clark in the vicinity of the communications unit. Wounds on the American crew member's body implied that he was struck with a force intense enough to cause substantial damage to the helmet and fracture the skull. Ooh, that's a bit, that's a bit gross. Oh, there's a phone. You discovered that the communications unit receiver was unhooked from the unit itself. It was functioning, playing its last transmission on loop. The recording goes as follows. Yes? Mal, abort mission. Ah, oh, right. Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. Mal? I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Abort mission. <laughs> going you then checked the main module of the communications unit. I did! Upon checking the communications unit, you discovered that there were no noticeable signs of damage or failure upon it. Its screen indicated that it had full signal. It does. You were then able to present the evidence to Mal in his central processing chamber at the front of the ship. I was? Okay, I guess I was. Alright, well let's go back to the, uh, to the entrance, I guess. Yeah. Wow, this is like, kinda crazy being out here. Get some pretty good, pretty fun, uh, pretty pictures. Uh, yeah. Wow, this is cool, man. I like it a lot. Oh, there's broken stuff. The power turbine rests within a tank of coolant. Its casing cracked as if it had been purposefully struck. Uh-oh. Yeah, so they all sort of went crazy and started destroying stuff. That seems weird. Wait, what's this way? This is the way to Mal. Right? Must be. Okay. Valeria Asimov and Rakesh Watcher stored many video games within the memory banks of the ship. I have deleted them. <laughs> they are artless entertainment. Right. Self-burn. Your record collection is... sparse. I will prepare a mixtape of my authorship for your return journey. Oh, thanks, man. Very much appreciated. Okay, so this isn't where Mal is. Oop. There we go. Wanted to go down. So it's broken. Alright. This is the way... This is the way... Yeah, that's... Sorry, we need to go back. Oop. Jeez, man. Okay, so that's where we came in. Okay, let's go down there. That, there's, there's where Mal is. Let's go find him. Oh, there might be more stuff. What is this? Manual. Uh, you used your sharp understanding of linguistics to decipher the following. Manual. 
meaning done by a human. <laughs> Emergency, meaning sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance. Thanks. Thanks. Lever, meaning thing which is pulled. Yeah. Its downward position implied that a human had encountered a sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance and pulled the thing. And pulled the thing. All right. Oh, here he is. What are you up to, man? You're out here, like, all dead? The recording shows that you discovered the body of one of the American crew members, Rakesh Watcher, his neck broken, hanging by a safety tether outside of the airlock. Ooh, that's unfortunate. That is unlucky, to say the least. Oh, and there's the, uh, the HAL view. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. This is really fun. I like space, and this game is like, got a good focus. All right. Oh, God, this is really... Yeah. Oh, we're going to go all the way in, are we? This is my central processing chamber. All right. I designed it. Here, I have the freedom of movement to perceive you from any angle. Oh, okay. Upon entering Mal's central processing chamber, you presented your chosen evidence for Mal's statement. Oh, well, let's do this one. You asked Mal to make a statement on the communications unit's receiver. Yeah. Fully functioning, yep. the final transmission between himself and ground control, which is me. <laughs> the communication cut out mid-transmission. It must have difficulty receiving signal this far out into space. You understood Mal to be a competent liar. However, when challenged with indisputable evidence, his otherwise intricate programming would revert to telling the absolute truth, resulting in an irrefutable confession. You presented the communications unit as evidence against Mal's statement. Yeah, I did. You pointed out that the communications unit was displaying full signal, despite being much further from Earth than when the final transmission initially cut out. I'm so good at this. This is true. I blocked his number. <laughs> I was not enjoying the conversation. Rude. With the confession from Mal that he deliberately and incredibly rudely ceased our correspondence, incredibly you rudely. With the investigation, asking for statements and contradicting those statements with the relevant evidence. Oh, okay. Right. All right, well, let's ask for a statement about him. There we go. You showed Mal the body of Rakesh Watcher hanging by the neck out of the airlock. After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Kisov had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark, Rakesh Watcher instigated physical combat with Valeria Asimov. She was able to defend herself against him due to the weakness in the neck region of the suit. Right. Let's try and... Uh... In response, you presented the manual emergency lever in the airlock. This lever was pulled during the conflict between Valeria Asimov and Rakesh Watcher, in which she wrapped a safety tether around his neck, then opened the airlock using the lever, thus breaking his neck. Ooh, that's hard. That's hard to contradict. Ah, and the game is afoot. The game is afoot. Okay. So, what about this person? You requested a statement from Mal by presenting him with the cadaver of Charlie Clark, which displayed clear signs of murder. This is Charlie Clark's cadaver. Whilst performing extravehicular activity, Dmitry Kisov struck him in the head with a maintenance tool until he stopped being alive. Which was once. <laughs> okay. Well, what if I contradict you with, with something else? Jeez, man, this is, this is actually, this has just gotten complicated. Um, I've gotten way too much, here we go, let's try this. Mal claimed that Charlie Clark was killed with a maintenance tool. You responded by presenting him with the blood-stained claw of the maintenance pod. Yeah, man. The congealed mess implicated this to be the murder weapon. This is a possibility, alas. There is no evidence to advocate that the maintenance tool is not the murder weapon. So, then what? 
Okay, so then what? What? Uh, um, here we go. Upon showing Dmitry Kizov's body to Mao, he made the following statement. This is the body of Dmitry Kisov. After he mercilessly murdered Charlie Clark, he used the maintenance pod to escape into deep space. But what? That doesn't make any sense. Can I... Ah, I can't use that to contradict. Okay. Um... Oh, man. I feel like I'm missing... I feel like these mean I'm missing... Uh, I'm missing a piece of evidence somewhere. Okay, well, that's 20 minutes. I'm going to leave it there. Wow, that's... Um, going around taking pictures is pretty rad. Uh... But now I'm like, oh man, confused. This is confusing. Definitely confusing. Um, what about, can I contradict him with this? In response, you presented the blood on the maintenance pod. This is irrelevant to the body of Dmitry Kisov. Right, okay, so that's not useful. Yeah, let's get a statement you for You presented them. Mal with Valeria Asimov's damaged suit and awaited a statement. Valeria Asimov was wearing this suit when Rakesh Watcher attacked her. However, her suit easily withstood the attacks from the maintenance tool. Right. Okay. But then we can refute that with the other guy's body? Because it didn't easily withstand. Yeah, this one. You compared Charlie Clark's damaged skull to that of the other suit, which was for the most part, unscathed. It demonstrated that a maintenance tool could not have broken Charlie Clark's helmet enough to wound him so. Yes! This is a possibility. But alas, if the maintenance tool was not the murder weapon, then what was? This one! You responded to Mal's question by presenting him with the blood-stained claw of the maintenance pod. Yeah! The congealed mess implicated this to be the murder weapon. Yeah! You are correct. Yes! The maintenance tool was not the murder weapon. It was the claw of the maintenance pod. You had disproven Mal's claim about the murder weapon. I am the best. yet verified Mal's involvement in the scenario. Oh my god, I have to I have to prove that he did it? Um, oof. How do I do that? Oh god, I'm just... This is... This is hard, dude. This is really hard. Okay, well, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Um, this is... 2001, a space felony, or how I learned to stop worrying and love murdering people indiscriminately, I think. Um, it's uh, on the Humble store, and it's a Humble original, and it's quite good. This is very weird and entertaining. So check it out if, you, uh, if you've liked what you've seen so far, and you probably will figure it out a lot faster than I have. I, it's the first sort of like detective play that I've seen that's actually good. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, and uh, comment down below, and I'll see you next time. Class dismissed!